Hello, everyone. When I first submitted the session proposal, I gave it the title Six Principles of the Next Generation Developer Portal. But that was half a year ago, and my memory isn't that great. So today I'll talk about five principles of the next generation developer portal. I'm joking, I'm under supervision here. So I will cover all six principles. My name is Mike Budzinski, I'm a product manager at Azure API Management, it's a Microsoft Cloud Computing API Management solution. I've been at Microsoft for a few years now, I've collaborated with top client engineers, with wonderful customers. I've never seen anyone taller than myself, so at least that's where I shine. <laughs> the top three things that I love in my life are French movies, French desserts, and API based styles. <laughs> I recently had an effort of building a new developer portal from scratch for many, many of our customers, so for thousands of our customers. And before we even started building the developer portal, we made a very extensive research regarding the developer portals, the web development trends, web design trends. We listened to feedback from our customers and we distilled the essence of the developer portals. Then, based on these findings, we came up with six principles. We came up with more principles, but today we'll cover six principles. The principles that led our technical decisions. And these principles are universal, and I will show them to you today, I will present them to you today. And every principle is followed by an example of how we incorporate it in practice and how you might be able to incorporate it as well. So all the references to, to the product are for educational purposes only. So let's get started. The principle number one is to architect for the fortress scalability. We wanted to make sure that the developer portal will be able to serve a mass of concurrent visitors on the web without consuming too many resources of too much resources of the API management product. So it should be able to scale without affecting other parts of the product, like for example the management interface or the API gateway part. We also wanted to make sure that the architecture is simple enough for easy maintainability, both on your side as the customers as well as on our side as the providers of the product. How did we achieve that? We decided to go with a lightweight Jamstack architecture. For those of you who are not familiar with Jamstack, Jam stands for JavaScript APIs and Markup. What it means in practice is that every piece of content, so every page, every style, every configuration, etc., is stored as markup documents, JSON documents in our case, which are then compiled, built into static HTML pages and static media files like JPEGs. PNGs, etc. Then any dynamic data, like for example user information or a list of APIs that I am authorized to see, is fetched through APIs, the letter A, on the runtime and from the client side JavaScript from the browser. So this is an example how it looks like in practice. When I open the developer portal out of the browser, first I uh, fetch all the HTML pages and, and media and then additional data is fetched using the APIs. So it's, you can think of it as a microservice in web development trends. There is no databases that are coupled with the portal, so there is fewer bottlenecks and fewer things that can go wrong. The principle number two, allow accessibility. We are very fortunate to have many, many customers from small businesses, to very specific niche players, to startups, to medium sized businesses, to government organizations, to global enterprises, which are the biggest in the world. However, each one of you probably has you have your own requirements, and you are not able to serve all these particular requirements, especially if they are specific to your cell phone. So, for example, your requirement might be, after using two years of using a developer portal, to integrate it with a custom built in house support system. And we are not even aware of the support system, so we cannot do it for you. Our goal was to allow our customers 
to extend the developer portals themselves, that our users to be really, really useful. How can you allow sensibility? So we need two things. First, the developer portal is built around components, and second, it is open source. Being open source means it's possible on GitHub, uh, of course, not on Cloud, but also Project Roadmap, Wiki, issues, and pull requests. And components are anything that you want to place on a page. So, for example, a sign form is a component, a button is a component, an image is a component, text is a component, a list of APIs is a component, etc. So, if you don't require any components that we don't have, so if the quality is already there, you can just use the portal that's built into your VPN and product. But if you require more things, you just fork this GitHub repository, write your own component, call it yourself, and then you need to host the portal yourself. Speaking of hosting, the next principle is enable easy deployments anywhere. That's partially of this approach that we took. But we also have customers who want to use developer portal on premises, not in the cloud, just for performance or maybe, to, or maybe some other uh, requirements. So, how can you enable this independence anywhere? This comes as a side effect of our previous decisions. So, this choice of just stack technology means that there is a static site generation set which outputs the HTML and media files. So very uh, easy and simple files on databases, etc. So that's kind of the technology of, of the 90s. And then, uh, being open source means that you have access to all the tools and you can run this generation step yourself. You can run it on local host, you can run it in the cloud, you can run it whatever, wherever you want to run it. So once you have this output of the portal, once you have those static HTML pages and media files, you can host them however you want to host them. The easiest way, probably, is to upload them to a cloud storage account. Optionally, from the CDN, it's just literally drag and drop. More complex ways is you can, for example, package it, package it in a Docker container image and uh, put a proxy layer inside, like Nginx, and then host it on the domain if you really like complexity. This is an example of this static site generation step. So the easiest way to do it is, the, is on local host. This is an example of how it works in the cloud. So the first arrow, you just trigger the published workers of that step from your local machine. And then, as an input, you feed the code repository of the portal and also the content of the portal. So all the pages, settings, etc. And that then this Azure function, for example, or AWS Lambda, or whatever, uh, works and outputs the static files. Principle number four, accelerated market. We wanted to make sure that our customers can go to market as soon as, as we enable them to. So that means minimizing the time it takes on the first administrative sign into the portal, to the prototype, POC, MVP, first release of the portal, and then consequent release. How can you accelerate the open market? For us, we achieved it by providing a set of features for uh, with providing default content of the developer portal. So this default content has been carefully crafted. It follows the latest design trends, meaning transitions, uh, animations, navigation, colors, gradients, visual components, etc. It's been thoroughly tested for accessibility, meaning that everyone can access the portal, even if they are not able, for example, to use a mouse or a touchscreen. We also make sure that it works across different screen sizes and across different devices, and it has a clear structure by default that we suggest you use, but of course you can change it. See, this is the landing page that is automatically provisioned when you first access the developer portal as an administrative user, and it's fully configurable. But on the top, of course, there is a local navigation, the call to action buttons, strong points of your solution, about us section, gallery of each of the APIs, technical uh, 
um, code sample for getting the user customer references, and then you can jump right to the list of APIs, which are presented in a clean table, you can group them by path, etc. And then you can go directly to the API reference for a particular API, which may see all the API operations, versions, details of the API, details of the API operations, so requests, responses, payloads, and the interactive console on the right. Principle number five. Tailor to administrators, content editors, designers, and developers. So it's important to realize that developer protocols are used by many different users, and there are two sorts of users. One is API providers, which is typically companies that provide APIs, sell APIs, and then it goes administrators, content editors, and designers. And then the second circle is API consumers, which is mainly developers who build applications that use those APIs, but it also be business decision makers and product managers, or maybe strategy people. How can you tailor to all these roles? We build a set of features for each one of these roles. So, for example, for administrators, we provided a role-based access control, meaning that they can scope permissions for other uh, editors of the portal, what they can or can do. So, for example, they can grant person A a permission to edit tutorial for EK1, person B to edit tutorial for EK2, and person C not to edit any page, but just tell the portal colors, margins, etc. So that would be a designer. For content editors, we provided a very intuitive and simple to use a drag and drop visual editor. So, though this component which you place on the pages, you just drag and drop them, you can easily configure them. For designers, we have a sign guide, which is a central location, a page with all the elements, visual elements from the drop of portal, where you can style them, and that ensures consistency that this overview. All these elements are used from the developer portal and no other elements. And lastly, for users, for visitors of the portal, for API consumers, we wanted to also minimize the time in case they have to retrieve or learn certain information. So we made sure that the navigation is correct, that they can easily navigate from the portal, they can test the APIs, and uh, search, for example, for APIs if there are thousands of APIs. This is an example of the administrative interface. These two panels on the left and the bottom. So you can jump between the pages, you can browse the layouts, which are templates, how things are displayed, media gallery, settings of the portal, and, and navigation menu and more. So in this example, I will go back to the landing page and I will remove the top header text and description to tackle that from the landing page, so literally just two clicks. And then I will also change this image that we provision by default to an image that matches my brand. I have already uploaded the image before, so I'll just pick this black computer name, save the page, and now I will navigate to the site guide. As you can see, you can import any Google font, you can style the typography, you can change the colors, I will change the primary blue color to black so that it matches the image that I uploaded. And then you can also optionally, optionally style other elements like buttons, forms, video players, images, navigation, menus, and more. Now, when I go back to the landing page, it's completely different. It took me literally five clicks or something around that to change it in total. Principle number six. Embrace DevOps. DevOps is very, very popular among our customers, and there are usually three reasons why they want to use DevOps. The first reason is if you want to migrate the portal or any other information between environments. So you have, a, for example, development environment, test environment, stage environment, and production environment, and then you want to make sure you migrate all of this across the environments. Second reason is backups, so you want to perform backups periodically, for example, every day or every week, and then, of course, be able to restore the backup if something goes wrong. The third reason is if you want to enable certain, set up certain processes in your organization, like, for example, manual reviews of the changes. 
And we wanted to make sure that DevOps is a first class citizen of the new developer portal. <coughs> and how did we achieve that? We achieved it by making all the comments, so all the pieces of the comment, like pages, comments, etc., accessible through REST API. So this JSON documents, you can download them or upload them through REST API. We also provided scripts in the GitHub repository for migrating to environments for backups. So that's very easy to do. There are well documented, you don't need to write any of your tools. And lastly, in the future, we're thinking of enabling people to put this content as part of a source control. So a Git repository where you can see all the comments and, and changes. This is an example of the REST API. As you can see, this particular endpoint is a few HTTP verbs, get to touch with it, takes the content type ID, which is in this case the page, the content item ID, which is an ID of the page. Uh, this is trimmed, trimmed, shortened for the purpose of this presentation. This is a page localized to two languages English, American English, and Russian. And uh, this document is, is, of course, much, much bigger. So the main takeaway is here, the six principles of the Next Generation Developer Developer Portal. I still have a few minutes if you want to take a picture, it's the best time right now. Mm -hmm. So, principle number one, architectural effort is scalability. Principle number two, allow extensibility. Principle number three, enable easy deployments anywhere. Principle number four, accelerate go to market. Principle number five, tailor to administrators, content editors, designers, and developers, principle number six, embrace DevOps. These principles are, again, universal. They guide our decisions, and hopefully they can also guide your decisions, whether you're managing a developer portal, building a developer portal, or maybe choosing or collaborating with someone on a developer portal. If you have any questions, please uh, ping me on Twitter. My handle is Andrew And if you would like to learn more about our product, or access other resources from the APIs that we prepared for you. For example, ebooks, uh, recordings from other sessions, from other conferences, blog posts, etc. You can access them at this link, aka.ms slash API now.